In this video, I'm going to share my opinion on the OM-1 camera. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video, I'm going to share my opinion on the OM-1 camera. This camera is on loan from OM System Finland and I'm going to return this camera right after this review. The lenses I used were this uh, 20 mm f1.4 and the 40 to 150 f4. This is not going to be a full review. This is going to be my opinion as a street and documentary photographer. I'm not going to go through all the features because this camera has uh, loads of features and many features that I don't need in my photography. I'm also not covering any other video features because I'm really a photographer, not um, a videographer, videographer, video shooter. And I suppose um, most of my audience is also more interested in photography than video. But of course I also tried to photograph some flying birds because I think that's one of those areas where this camera really shines. But now enough of small talk, let's uh, uh, dive into it and start with the ergonomics and uh, the size. When you first look at the camera, it looks like it's made from two cameras. The grip is from a bigger camera and the rest of the uh, camera is from a smaller camera. The grip it looks like it's a little bit uh, too big for the camera body. But then again, the grip is very comfortable and the camera is very, very um, comfortable to hold. And I guess this proves that uh, if you want to make a camera body that handles well, especially with some little bit bigger lenses, you can't make it uh, uh, too small because then it becomes awkward to handle. And I think this OM-1 is just about as small as you can go without making it awkward, with, especially with some bigger lenses. This camera is very, very nice to handle and uh, operate. However, there are a couple of things that I'm not too crazy about. And the first is the power switch, which is here on the left side of the viewfinder. And yes, I know I can use also the function lever on the right side of the viewfinder as a power switch. But then if I do that, then the power switch is redundant. It doesn't do anything. And I find it odd that I, can, I cannot program any function um, for the power switch if I use the function lever as the, the power switch. So it would be nice if I could program something also on the, on the power switch after that. The other thing is the D-pad on the back of the camera. I'd like to see a third dial here. Then I could have a separate dials for my shutter speed, aperture and ISO like I have on my other cameras that have three command dials. But neither of these things that I mentioned are uh, major like uh, uh, downsides, just something that I'm not too crazy about. But um, overall, I would say that this camera handles nicely and I don't have anything major to complain about. I shot some street photography with this specific combo, the camera body and the 20 millimeter lens, and I really love it. And uh, the 20 millimeter angle of view is, is quite nice. I'm starting to like that angle of view. However, when I look at the size of this combo and compare it to some full frame alternatives with similar type of lens, then the difference in size and weight is almost nothing. And uh, in my street photography, I don't see much benefit uh, from the smaller sensor or the smaller system. But of course, I understand that um, if you like to carry as many lenses with you as you can, then uh, the smaller system starts to make sense. But my photography is fairly simple and I don't like to carry many lenses. I only like to carry minimal gear and usually it is only one lens and one camera body. Then I went to photograph flying birds. I went to 
the main market square here in Helsinki and there are usually loads of seabirds. They are trying to steal your food if you buy some street food or fast food. And it's a good place to photograph birds, easy place. And I really had a good time there. I stood there for maybe about 10 minutes and during that 10 minutes I ended up uh, shooting just under 2000 pictures of flying birds. And now I understand why so many amateur bird photographers love this camera because it's easy to get that feeling of satisfaction and success because with this camera it is really really super easy to photograph flying birds, almost too easy. But you'll also end up with a lot of frames and that's gonna take a fair bit of your post-processing time to filter out the, the few good frames that you have on your card. But this camera is probably the best value for money for flying bird photography. And then about the image quality. First of all, I'm disappointed that this camera still only has 20 megapixels. And I know it's uh, enough for many of you and for many uh, situations, but still it's year 2022 and I would like to see at least 25 or 30 megapixels here, uh, if not for any other reason, but it would uh, separate, clearly separate this camera from the rest of the uh, older Olympus cameras with the, the same pixel count. Now, if you don't follow all the news and rumors, you don't necessarily even realize that there is a new sensor in here. The image quality itself is uh, slightly improved, but nothing major there. My normal workflow is uh, Lightroom, but I also used the OM workspace. And um, I don't think it's any kind of a miracle application that makes all of a sudden these files look superior. I think it's just a little bit different from Lightroom, but uh, the differences are more of uh, like a matter of taste than, than anything else. But don't uh, uh, misunderstand me or don't, please do not, twist my words. If you like um, OM Workspace and you're happy with it, then I'm really happy for you. Please continue to use it and uh, enjoy. After all, it's, uh, it's a free application. But I don't like to deviate too much from my normal workflow, which is Lightroom. And uh, there are also some really effective uh, plugins for Lightroom, for example, the new DxO Pure RAW 2. It works inside Lightroom and uh, it also does a really good job with the uh, noise and sharpening if you, if you uh, want something more than Lightroom can do. And uh, also the workspace, in my opinion, uh, it's a little bit clunky and slow to use, so I don't really like it that much. I have a separate video about the handheld high-res mode. It's up here. Please take a look if you didn't uh, uh, watch it already. But if you watch that video, please do remember that it's just a simple comparison, comparing two different methods um, to make a 50 megapixel file. Nothing more, nothing less. I got some comments <laughs> for that video telling me that I'm an idiot because I didn't do it this way or that way. I just share the results that I got. Please remember that. <laughs> all in all, I'd say this is a very nice uh, micro four thirds camera. And I can fully understand why so many amateur wildlife and especially bird photographers get excited about this camera because it is really, really easy to succeed with this camera and get sharp results of flying birds, especially. But I can't help uh, wondering, what are they, they going to do? What is OM system going to do with their future, more affordable cameras that they inevitably are going to release one day. What kind of features can they put into those cameras to keep them appealing and uh, keep them competitive? And uh, what are they going to do to make people uh, switch their 
previous Olympus camera to that camera because the sensor is most likely to be the same as, as here. So the image quality uh, improvement alone, I don't think it's, um, it's enough to make you switch if you already have uh, one of the latest uh, EM5s, for example, was it Mark III or whatever the latest EM5 was, or some other 20 megapixel Olympus camera, one of the latest Olympus cameras, because those Olympus cameras were already really feature-rich cameras and they had many many of these computational features already and uh, many other things. I don't think it's going to be an easy task for OM system to come up with, uh, with an appealing lower end or medium end, <laughs> a more affordable uh, camera body that is uh, both uh, competitive and appealing and uh, has a good price. But if you're going to buy this camera and you're willing to spend about 2200 euros or dollars at the time of recording this video um, for a, a micro four thirds camera, uh, you are going to get probably the best micro four thirds camera for photography if you buy this one. Thank you so much. Um, I'll see you in the next video.